Welcome back to the Character Sculpt series where I run through my entire workflow from start to finish. Last time we modeled some hair and created the materials for the hair. If you missed out on it or any of the other parts of the series, there's a playlist in the description. Today we're modeling Zelda's clothes and a couple of accessories. Okay, here we are where we left off from the last video. We can probably, yeah, we can delete these planes that we created last time. And let's go and unhide our rig. Now before we go putting any clothes together, I like to get at least pretty close to what the final pose is going to be. So there isn't much tutorialing going on in this part. It's pretty well just moving these handles around. The only thing that I really have something to say about is um, like if you've got your fingers here, these can bend with uh, S when you're scaling them, but you see how they kind of come in, they kind of squeeze together. You can go up here to your transformation pivot points and move it to individual or origins and now they should bend pretty well. And if there's any um, things that you'd like to change about the anatomy, you can, like say, click on this hand, you can scale it up or down, and you can toggle x-ray mode to see the rest of the controls. So you can scale on this one, it'll make it skinnier or fatter. And um, this would be the time that you'd probably want to, if you want to edit the, the shape of the face any. You can move these around, you can change the size of the eyes or move them around if you want to. This would be a good time to do that. Just uh, if you've got something that is symmetrical, you want to turn on your X symmetry. That way you don't have to do twice the modifying. But I'm going to go ahead and get her in what I think would be maybe a pretty good final pose. Okay, I think I kind of got the pose the way that I want it. We can hide the rig now. The idea is that she's going to have a sword right here in her hands, right in front of her face. And then she's going to have a cloak back here. And this is pretty well going to be the pose. There is some weird spots, like uh, the way her hip looks right here. And then uh, there's some other weird spots, like around her hands, especially on this hand over here. The pose didn't go too great with the rig. But these are things that we're going to sculpt out later and also like the way that her shoulders look and all of these things. We're going to take care of that later. Well, we keep, we want to keep the rig showing. What we can do to keep this from being cluttered is let's say we can just uh, grab this little ring on her head and let's hit shift H. That way we hide everything but that ring on her head. And then when we select the rig, which all we've got showing is the ring, and then we go down here to the object data properties if we click on rest position we're gonna snap back to our t pose so whenever we want to we can switch from our t pose when we're working and trying to stay symmetrical we can be in the rest position and then when we want to do something that's not symmetrical and we want or we want to see how things fit after pose we can click on pose position and she's going to snap back to where it was if your hair curves are still showing down here like mine are we can select those we can just hide them we don't need to have them in the scene you may also need to turn off the render visibility too, otherwise they'll show up in your renders later. So let's get started on these clothes. Let's select Zelda here, which is our base mesh. Let's select the base mesh. We'll tab into edit mode. So let's start off pretty simple. Let's make her pants. If we select this loop on her thigh and then this other loop on the other thigh and we press control plus to start growing the selection, we're gonna go up to right around her waist where her belly button is, and that should get us down to the ankles as well. With those selected, let's hit Shift D, and that duplicates it. We'll right click to reset its position, and we'll press P to separate the selection. We'll tab back out into object mode. Now let's select our new mesh. We'll go over here into our modifiers, and let's add a solidify modifier. We'll drag it above the subdivision, 
and then where it says offset minus one let's just change that to one so now she has some pants but they're a little bit thick they're a little too thick so let's lower the thickness down let's take it from 0 0.01 to maybe 0 0.001 that's a little too thin so let's do 0 0.005 so that's a little bit better now up here it's a little wavy where the geometry was a little weird around the belly button we can go in here and if we disable the solidify we can see this a little better and uh, if you want to you can turn snapping on that'll keep it snapped to the base mesh that's right behind it we'll hit GZ and we'll bring this straight up it should straighten that out so let's tab back out we'll turn our solidify back on and there we have it that's that's the pants that's all we need for the pants so with that done let's go ahead and do the shirt we'll select the base mesh tab into edit mode let's press slash that way we can isolate just the base mesh and with x-ray turned on we can select down here at the bottom of her torso and then let's select over here right at her wrists and then we'll select everything in here between I'm holding down shift to select multiple we'll get all of this and we'll get this loop up here that's selected let's press shift D we'll separate it we'll go back into object mode now let's grab our new mesh that we just created tab into edit mode and let's press slash a couple times that way we can just isolate this part now so there's some things that we really don't need on here. Let's take this loop right here all the way around and then we'll delete the verts. And then if you have any stragglers left over, you can just hover over them, press L and it'll select the linked. Now let's take our isolation off and we can see that we've got this whole belly button thing here and that's going to give us a belly button shape, but we don't actually want that in the shirt. So let's just select all of these middle verts here and delete them. We'll grab this guy here. We'll bring it straight down and we'll extrude a vert down the center here and we'll start filling these in. So that takes care of, let's turn the snapping off. We'll grab this belly button vert here and we'll bring it out. And that way it isn't going to be caving in. Right there giving us a weird belly button shape through her shirt. We can also take the mean crease off of her, um, her clavicles and let's take them off of her elbows and her shoulder blades. All right, with that, let's tab out into object mode. Let's add a, another solidify modifier to the shirt. We'll drag it above the subdivision, change the offset to one. And so it doesn't look like she's wearing a sweater. Let's drop this down to 0 0.005. Still looks a little bit thick. Let's try 003. It's a little bit better. Now one thing I'm noticing here is her boobs are really pronounced. There's, it's like it's a skin tight shirt, which is something that we don't really want. Let's tab into edit mode on the shirt again and let's disable the solidify so we can see it a little bit better. Let's grab some of these middle verts here and let's turn on proportional editing. Let's hit GY. That way we can bring the middle of her shirt out just a little bit. And if you're having issues with these creases getting in the way, we can always just get rid of the creases that way it's a smoother transition so what we're doing here is we're just trying to move some of the verts around to make it to where it doesn't look like her shirts hugging her boobs up what we're mainly worried about is right between her boobs okay let's go into sculpt mode maybe we can try slide relaxing some of these let's slide relax some of the boobs from the center here that way there's more of a transition from the tips of her boobs to the outside of her shirt. And you can see from the blue outline that our base mesh is going to start poking through. Let's see if the solidify takes care of it. It seems okay except for right around the tips and then a little bit in her armpits here. So what we can do is go into the base mesh and make sure that you have saved your base mesh because sculpting on it is destructive. Okay, so make sure you have a separate file saved. So what we can do is go up here to inflate and if we hold down control and then click on these spots that are busting through the shirt mesh, it will shrink it. So we're going to shrink those down so they're not seen. So now let's grab her little halo up here. Let's go down to the object data properties and go to pose position. So this is how she looks with her shirt and her pants while she's posed. Let's pop back into rest position. We're actually going to need to shorten her shirt up a little bit. Let's go back into edit mode on the shirt. We'll turn on x-ray and then let's delete 
to the, the loop that's just a couple before the elbows. We'll delete these vertices and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, let's select this loop here and with proportional editing turned on, let's put this back to bounding box center as our transformation. Let's hit S for scale. We'll go scale Y and let's roll it up a little bit. Get that up to about right there and then we'll hit G Y to bring it back. And then let's grab these two, we'll scale Z, that way it pulls it up right there. And we'll maybe grab right here and bring it back some too, just to make the transition. And then we'll grab right here in the elbow, GX, we'll bring this up some. Now you can see in the pose position, this gives us kind of what we're looking for, especially down here on this one. We'll have to do a little bit of um, sculpting later on to get this to be exactly the way that we want it. But for right now, we've got the geometry to be edited later. Let's go back in to the base mesh here. Let's select right around here. We'll get a few of these and we'll duplicate them. We will separate them back in object mode so we can get into this new piece of the sleeve. Let's take this here and we'll scale it up. And let's scale this up a little bit too. We'll add a loop cut right before the last one and move it pretty close. And then we'll grab the last loop cut and we'll pull it inside of the other one. That way the sleeve kind of tucks in on itself here. Just like that. Let's kind of rotate this one around. And scale it out a little bit more. And we'll add a loop cut over here. We'll move it back and we'll scale it up a little bit too. And we'll rotate it the other way. grab these inside verts that way we can bring the mean crease up and then on these if you want to add a little bit of mean crease to them you can that'll sharpen up the folds a little bit down here on this one too where it comes in that should work out all right let's hit a and then we'll scale it a little bit tab out and let's add a mirror to get it on the other side and we'll drag it up above the armature we'll check it out on the pose it seems all right okay so there's one more part to her sleeve and that's the little cuffs let's go in here again we're going to duplicate some more let's select from here and we'll go we'll just get these three loops here go into edit mode and let's actually we'll bring this one out a little bit more closer to the end we can bring this one out too and we'll scale this one up and let's let's scale it by X on zero that way it's straight and then we can rotate it a bit add a loop cut in here that way we can scale this one down and we'll scale this one up we may want to bring these back a little bit too to keep it from clipping so let's tab out and let's uh let's join it to this one so hold down shift and click this one control J that way it's going to take its properties of the mirroring and let's um, let's add a solidify with it too. Solidify, bring it above the subdivision and let's make it a bit smaller. 05, 005. Let's check it again. Back into pose position. A little bit of trouble right there with it. Down here looks pretty good. Yeah, we got a little trouble where the, the thumb flesh is clipping in there. We'll have to fix this clipping here too. Okay, back to rest position. Now there's different ways that we can make this, um, these details that are on her chest here, but I'm gonna go with curves. So let's go shift A, mesh, or I'm sorry, shift A, curve, and then I'm gonna add in a rectangle, and then I'm gonna scale it down on the Y, I'm gonna bring it to make it a little bit thinner. Now let's back into object mode, and let's add a curve path and then I'm going to set it as the geometry which is our rectangle and that's going to give us a rectangle that we can shape up around her um, her chest area so let's scale it down Alt S to shrink it let's rotate it around we'll bring it up closer to her chest we'll scale it down let's get in a little closer and I'm actually going to turn snapping on for this let's get it into place here and we'll start snapping it on
And once I get up over the neck, I'm just going to start extruding these over to the center and place this one on zero. So now with control T, we can start twisting these to where they're going to be closer to where they need to be. Okay, we don't have to work too, too hard on this detail. Let's go ahead and add a mirror modifier in. All right, let's select these verts right here. We'll shift D to duplicate them and we'll bring them out. Let's get this one close to that. And then we'll put one right here on the corner where her boob kind of comes up to the armpit. And then we'll take this one and we'll put it up here close to where it comes back in like that. And let's select these. We will right click and subdivide them. We've got a few extra handles to work with. We can start twisting them. And don't worry if uh, if you can't get them right above it too great, because I'm planning. I'm, I'm thinking of uh, changing the um, the bevel reference to something flat that we can use, and then we'll just use a solidify on it later. Okay, so to get this last part, let's get three of these verts again. We'll duplicate them, bring them down here, and we'll start going around her arm. And we'll just, I don't know how the back of her thing looks, so we're just going to go up to the top here until we connect back in. Now let's try to get the twist on these right. Just a bunch of tweaking. Okay. Now I'd imagine if we wanted to, we could go over here into edit mode and probably just delete a couple of these. That way it's just one straight line. Yeah, there's less geometry that we have to fight with like that. Okay, so let's tab over to object mode. We'll click on this mess that we made here and then right click. Convert to mesh. Let's take it into edit mode. And we probably don't need this side over here. Now let's add a mirror modifier. I know I've, I've, I've done this probably the wrong way. I probably should have just took a plane and extruded it around and stuff, but I, I just wanted to try something new. So I won't be doing this one this way again. But since I've already been this far, I'm going to just stick with this and finish it up this way. But the idea was I was going to take and um, merge some of these together. Yeah, I like that. And then when I got up here, this could use a loop cut up it like that. Move these over here, and I can merge those. Move this up here. Let's add a couple of loops on this. That way I can start merging these together. All right, that's going to be good enough. Tab out of edit mode. And it looks like we'll probably just, we'll click on the, the little harness thing here and then we'll click on her head or her, um, the armature. We'll hit control P and then automatic weights. And we're going to make sure, we're going to want to make sure that the mirror modifier is above the armature and we want the armature to be above everything else except for the mirror. Now let's go into pose mode and see what it looks like. So it's on her, it's okay, but it's still it's still clipping through. We'll just have to manually sculpt that back down later on. Let's make sure we should save just in case we have a crash. So let's do the little um, bottom of the eagle thing detail here that's on the that's in between her boobs here. So it looks like we're gonna take these two. We'll extrude these down just a little bit. We'll extrude again, but pull them out. And then one more time, and we'll pull them in. And then we'll take this middle vert here and we'll pull it on down to make it sharp. Okay, now let's grab this one. Scale it down some. Extrude it out. Just a little bit like that. And then extrude again. And then we'll extrude a little square here. Okay, now over here, we'll extrude this one this way. Just a little bit. That way, we're trying to get this corner to be a little bit sharp. And then we'll extrude this one on out. Do another one. Come down here. 
do a short extrusion and then one more long one like this and we'll scale this one down and over here a little short extrusion we'll do another one we'll rotate it around and then we'll do another extrusion and bring it in we'll scale it down let's grab this vertex here and pull it up okay so that should be the details on that all right so she has this th this kind of belt thing that goes around her waist let's add a just let's just add a circle tab into edit mode and uh, let's bring it straight up we'll scale it down and let's try to get it to fit her waist right above uh, the the line for her pants let's go into side mo uh, view and we'll move it forward we'll scale it along the y-axis to bring it in tighter let's rotate it a bit we're just going to try to match the top of the pants there so back in the front view let's hit E extrude it along the z-axis we're going to bring it straight down and it's not very long but we're going to bring it down pretty far that way we can see it we're going to scale it on X bring it straight out it's going to end up somewhere like this go into side view we need to scale it on Y to make it wide enough to cover her butt so that looks alright I know it's clipping back here let's go into front view again and let's rotate this down like this because it's got kind of an angle to it it's almost like a s skirt belt thing scale it on the, on the Y some more the main thing we're worried about is these bottom verts clipping into the legs now let's add an edge loop in the middle of it and we'll scale it let's move it to our lift just a little bit okay so let's grab this middle loop here we'll hit Control b to bevel it and we'll slide it let's add an edge loop near the top we'll press e that way it makes it snap to this other edge up to here if you if you if you're doing it like this normally when you add an edge loop it tries to get the average between this top point and this bottom point if we hit e it'll match to one or the other so now we're trying to keep the same distance on the top so we'll do that up here we we'll add an edge loop at the bottom we we'll hit E that way it's we want it to yeah there we go I'm gonna keep the same distance on the bottom let's grab the bottom loop and the top loop let's hit alt E and then extrude faces along normals we'll pull it out just a little bit that should be enough now let's go in we'll grab this loop that's on the very corners and we're gonna pull them in crease all, crease all the way up let's tab out let's go shade smooth it let's add a subdivision surface and let's add a solidify okay that should be good enough let's tab out so let's grab the belt and we'll grab the armature shift click it control P with automatic weights now let's take a look at the pose position eh, it looks pretty good we have a little bit of editing to do as always back to rest position we've got her boots we can actually on these legs we can actually delete everything from here down since her boots are going to be covering everything else up let's go into the base mesh and let's grab from the knee down to about right here we'll hit shift D we'll separate it and we'll go into edit mode on this part edit mode edit mode on this part if there's any increases go ahead and remove them now let's select this top loop and we'll move it up just a little bit and in the front view let's grab this vert the single vert here turn on proportional editing and we're gonna want to pull it down now let's grab these top loops up here let's hit E S so we're gonna extrude scale it we're gonna scale it out like this and it's kind of got a funky shape right now let's go scale Z zero to flatten it all out and that way they're all completely straight and then let's give it a curve like this and we'll pull it straight down now we can start shaping it into place all right let's create an edge loop here in the center 
in this part so we can pull it all the way up towards the top and then on the outer side here okay so for the rest of this let's select these two verts we'll hit control B to bevel it and we'll pull it out like this and then we're going to select this triangle that we just made M merge at center we're going to grab our face select here select this face and we'll delete it now we can pull these out just a little bit put an edge loop bring it up to the top and that's going to bring that guy all the way up there let's put another edge loop here we'll scale it by X that way it kind of poofs it out some and we can bring these out just a little bit and let's try adding an edge loop down this that way it makes these a little bit sharper let's select the boot here we'll add a solidify We'll make it one and we'll make the thickness like before zero zero five. Oh, actually since we kind of came up and flopped out it's gonna be probably better if we did a zero on the offset there we go let's grab another piece of our leg here let's actually let's jump out of pose mode let's reset the pose now let's uh jump back into the base mesh we're gonna grab this loop from there down to uh, probably down to here we'll duplicate it separate it go into edit mode let's grab this front vert here we'll bring it forward we'll grab the back of the foot we'll bring it out this way and then we'll just scale these a little bit and that should be all we need for that do another solidify make it one bring the thickness down place it above the subdivision alright so the leg part or the foot part of this we'll just leave it on the base mesh we'll use it as the actual foot or as the actual bottom of the boot so I actually want this boot to have kind of like a heel so let's tab into edit mode here we'll go into bottom view and with face select let's select these verts right on the heel and um, let's extrude them down but extruding doesn't work with um, with the symmetry on so we're actually gonna have to do both sides at the same time so whatever you selected over here do the same thing over here so I'll select the same ones go into side view let's extrude straight down with Z scale Z zero and um, let's put it let's put it right on that green line that'd be a good one to go with let's bring them increase all the way up and then on the front up here let's go back to seven nine let's grab the remaining verts minus this one right here this this little section here go into side view and let's just GZ we'll bring it down and then we'll scale Z0 and we're gonna increase this up and then with edge select let's select these edges here it's hard to see in x-ray mode and over here grab the same edges and what we're gonna do is pull the mean crease up on them too that would sharp where this heel comes up into that all right Lex last thing with the boots one more thing with the boots she's kind of got this toe kicker thing going on so let's select these loops and then this part here duplicate it separate it go into edit mode we don't really need these bottom pieces so we'll get rid of them but we do want to keep this sharp add the solidify on it make it one zero zero five bring it above the subdiv add the mirror put the mirror above the armature okay so there's our boots those are finished we're getting closer next we got this little band that goes right under her boobs here let's go into her shirt we'll go into edit mode and for now let's turn off the solidify 
Now there's not really a great loop that we can grab here. This one goes all the way across the middle of her boobs and then this one here is going to go up her arms. So let's just go into isolation mode here and let's just select these under her boobs here and then we'll grab this one and we'll continue all around her back until we get to the other side like this. Now let's copy what we got here. Let's shift E. We'll separate it by selection. And let's go in here into edit mode on this one and let's isolate it. Go into vertex mode. We'll select half of it and delete it. And then over here, let's delete this vert. And then we'll bring this guy down and this guy over. Select both of these, merge it center. So that's got those taken care of. Add a mirror in. Let's bring it all the way up to the top. Turn on clipping. Let's go into front view here. We'll tab out of edit mode. And then in the solidify, let's show the solidify again. And let's turn the solidify back on this one too. That way we can see how much more we got to pump into this. So it's at 0.3. Let's go up to 0.5 to see what it looks like. Let's go a little bit more. 0.5, let's go to 0.6. That's going to have to do. Sculpt mode, get our inflate brush, and let's just start clicking to pump this up. That way it stops clipping through. Get our grab brush. Let's pull the middle down just a little bit. Kind of even this out. We'll add a loop cut towards the top and one towards the bottom. And we'll put one in the middle just so we can have the extra geometry. Let's select this top loop and the bottom loop. We'll turn solidify back on. Go Alt E and we'll extrude the faces along the normals. And there we go. We want to pull this out just a little bit. Now let's get these under pieces. So we can pop the crease up on them. There we go. All right, let's put our little Zelda logo that's supposed to be there on that band. Let's go with a cylinder, tab in edit mode, RX90. Let's bring it forward like that and we'll scale it on the Y. We'll scale it on down and pull it up. Let's just get it close. And uh, let's scale Y. We can make it thick because it's gonna clip in anyways. Go to the front, let's scale it up some more. Make sure your snapping's off. So what I'm going to do for this is uh, with face select, I'm going to select the front face. I'm going to inset it. We'll bring it in a little bit and then we'll extrude it in just a little bit. Let's grab this loop here. We'll bevel it and then we'll grab this one and we'll bevel it too. So now when we shade smooth it, it should, yeah, let's just wait before we jam it into the little chest piece there. Let's go shift A mesh we'll just add a plane tab into edit mode rx90 let's pull it out forward a little bit now we can scale it down all right in vertex select mode let's select these two top verts here and let's hit m merge at center and we've got us a nice triangle okay let's extrude this backwards doesn't matter how far we'll select the front face up here, we're going to bevel it. That seems okay. Let's scale it down, something like that. We'll bring this guy up. Let's duplicate it. Bring this guy over here. And we'll bring the other guy over there. Now let's see if we can get this thing to fit in there pretty good. Okay. Now let's bring it all the way back into our thing that we made. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll work. Okay, let's join these two together. Shade Auto Smooth. And then in Edit Mode, let's GY. We'll bring it back into it. Let's rotate a little bit. That way it kind of matches the angle. Yeah, that should work. Let's add it to the armature. Control P, Automatic Weights. And there's that piece. Well, that's another one. All right, so what's next? Zelda is wearing gloves, fingerless gloves. So let's go into edit mode on the base mesh again. Let's grab a loop, control plus it out, and that should be enough. 
We'll duplicate it, separate it. Let's go ahead and add the solidify. We'll have it at one. Bring the thickness down. Let's bring this above the subdiv. And it's still really thick. So let's bring this down a little bit more. Let's bring 003. Let's try that. Maybe even two. So that's looking a little bit better. So let's see, what else can we do? We've got, I think she keeps a pouch on her back. Yeah, I think she keeps a pouch on her back. So let's, um, let's add a cube and let's go into edit mode. We'll do a subdivision surface modifier and we're gonna subdivide it in the right click menu too to make gets it closer to a cube size or cube shape let's scale it down bring it right behind her butt let's put it on this side we'll scale it on z scale it on y we'll make it skinnier and let's grab this loop here we'll bevel it that way it goes all the way near the edge we'll do the same thing with this loop it rounds it off a little bit better and we'll grab this loop here and let's bring it this way some then let's scale these down on Z and we'll scale that on X let's grab some of these top faces come down and get this face duplicate it separate it and let's move everything forward just a little bit just a touch this one move it forward let's scale this down it's going to ease our corners right here. We'll bring them up to ease the corners a little bit more. We'll bring this one straight down to make this rounder. Put a solidify on this. Bring it above the subdiv. All right. Let's maybe add one more detail to the pack. Let's um, let's add a belt to it. Let's go Shift A, add a plane. Go to edit mode and we'll scale it down. Let's put it right above it. And uh, we're going to be lazy about it and. And just wrap it completely around it instead of having it go somewhere specific. So I got snapping on. I'm going to start extruding this round. Now we'll shade smooth it. We should be able to add a solidify. Offset to zero. Let's see what a subdiv looks like on it. Supply the solidify on the top piece. We'll add it. We'll solidify. We'll apply it on the belt. Now let's join all these three pieces together. And let's add them to the belt. Might be a little too big. Now let's select this. Shift select the armature tab into pose mode. We hit Alt H to unhide everything and then let's select our hip bone here. We hit Control P and we'll just parent it to the bone. Let's go and check out our pose. There's our pack. It's clipping. We're going to be sculpting this thing away from it so I think we're going to be okay. Alright so Zelda has a hair clip that clips right into um, her bang section here. So let's work on that. Let's just make a plane. Scale it down. I'm turning snapping on again. Okay, so let's see how we want to do this. Probably want to come up like this. Then we'll extrude out like this. Bring this guy to the top. Extrude this guy down. Over here. Then we'll extrude this on down this way. We should be able to just extrude these down into the head like this. Let's take a look at what that's going to look like. I, I mean, I know it looks trashy right now, but I just I need it with the solidify so I know what's going on. Let's add edge loop here and here. And let's add one right here and right here. And let's bevel these two. Let's move it around that curve up here let's pull this on up to make that sharper let's put an edge loop all the way through it like that with G so we can snap it and then I'll turn snapping off I'm grabbing these verts and I'm just gonna jam them right into the head all right so that's what that's looking like let's add a mirror 
we'll grab these, grab the head bone, go into pose mode, head bone selected, control P, iron it to the bone. And that works out pretty good. Let's go shift A, we're going to do a curve, a path, and then we're going to use that rectangle that we edited earlier as our path. So it's just going to be a straight line. Alt S will scale it down. Now let's bring this up here. And I think that'll work. Now let's right click convert to mesh and then we'll add a loop cut in the middle here just to give it a little bit more resolution. And what we'll end up doing with this particular piece is we'll, we'll do it with texturing. It's got some transparent spots in it or it's, it's, it's got holes cut in it but we'll just do like a transparent texture and that'll take care of it. Take care of it. Parent this automatic weights. It does okay except for right here. We'll pull it back out later. Okay let's model her cloak. Let's add a plane. Let's just rotate it to where it's standing straight up and down like this. So we can see about how big we want it to be. We want it to come from her shoulders. We'll get about this wide. On the top we're going to want to scale it down to make it a little bit more narrow. And her cloak actually comes up to about right below her butt. It's not a very long cloak. Let's, uh, let's make it wider. Let's flip it back up sideways like this. We're going to bring the back of it right to the back of her neck. We're going to select the two verts that's closest to her neck. We're going to extrude it forward. We'll bring it up right past her neck. Then let's extrude it forward again. Probably out past her boobs just a little bit. Now let's add a loop cut up the middle. And let's bevel it. We're wanting to get it right on the outside of her neck. Okay, so now let's go into edge mode and let's select this edge that's right in the middle. We'll hit delete edges and that's going to delete the whole middle part right here. Let's pull this part forward and this part back just a little bit. Let's add another edge loop right here. Let's pull it up a little bit close like that. Alright another edge loop up front up here. About right there. Now let's grab this vert and this vert and we'll bevel them. Grab these three verts, we'll merge them together. Grab this face, we'll delete it. Let's start bringing these into a point. Let's just delete this side here. We'll delete all the verts on this side and add a mirror modifier in. Let's add a loop right here too. And we'll move it along the X, bring it out some and bring these up. We're gonna get like a little bit of a shape like like a crescent shape here. Alright, let's add a few edge loops to the back. Now let's hit A, right click and subdivide. And that might be enough geometry, I'm not sure. But we'll, we'll try it anyways. Let's tab out into object mode. We'll apply the mirror modifier. Now let's tab back into edit mode and let's hit GZ. We're going to want to bring this up so it's not clipping through the shoulders anymore. Let's tab out into edit mode. Let's click our base mesh, base mesh down here into um, physics properties. Let's put collision. Let's click on our cloak and let's add a cloth and uh, our, our cloak's falling all the way down there. Down here on our bottom window, let's drag it up a little bit. Let's switch this to the timeline. If you're like me, you accidentally hit space bar all the time. When you hit space, it, it makes the timeline go. So let's rewind this back to zero. and. Uh, up here at the cloth at the top you can click on the presets and then I usually choose cotton as the preset. Scroll down and under collisions you can change the distance which I'm going to change it from 0.15 to probably 0 0.001. Turn self collisions on, turn the distance down on it too. And then up here at quality steps let's, let's bring that up to like 8 and uh, we'll hit spacebar to see what happens. Oh yeah, I forgot. We got it. We should probably shade smooth this and then add a subdivision surface modifier after. Okay, so there's a big gap between our cloth and our character. So let's click on our base mesh. Let's go back down into the physics properties and in collision, the thickness outer, let's change it to 0 .001 and let's try it again. Okay, so it works out pretty good, except it keeps bringing itself up and choking her. So let's go back. We're going to have to set a pin group now. So let's go into edit mode. 
Let's actually just just grab this vert and this vert. We'll go over here to the object data properties and we'll click plus. And we're just gonna call this pin and hit assign with the weight all the way up. Now in the physics properties, scroll down, open up shape, and in pin group, let's just select our pin that we made. Now let's tab back out in object mode. Let's hit spacebar to play it. Okay, so it stays it stays a little bit better now. Okay, so let's find out, can, can we have a good bone that we can have this connect to on the armature? Let's go here and select the cloak, shift select the head, bone, let's go into pose mode, alt H to unhide everything, and I think if we choose this bone, control P to bone, I think if we choose that bone we might be alright. Let's go into pose mode. What happens now? Our cloak is very, very stiff. Let's see if adding more geometry helps. Go to subdivide, and let's play it again. Alright, so a little bit more geometry helped a little bit. We got some more folds in here. And you can see right here starting off that um, we're kind of clipping in. So maybe we should not have parented that to the head bone. Or to the, the neck bone. We probably should have parented it to, the, um, to this bone here. So let's hit Alt P to clear the parent, shift select the armature, and then go into pose mode, select the chest bone, control P, parent it to the bone. Now let's see how it transforms with the pose. Yeah, that works a little bit better. Let's go back into the physics properties. Let's put the quality steps up just a little bit more. Let's raise the vertex mass up just a little bit and see what happens. That gives us some better folds. I like that a whole lot better. Okay. Now if you want it to be um, tattered, like if you want our cloak to have cuts and rips and stuff in it, you can go into edit mode. And um, let's say I want to split right here. We can select these verts. Control B. We'll bevel these. We'll take these ones here. Merge these at the center. And then we'll take these faces here and just delete them. Delete the faces. And if you want these certain pieces to be sharper, we can select the verts and then bring the vertex crease up like that. It makes them makes them sharper. So we do the sim. There we go. It'll behave a little different because we took some of the mass away. Okay, we got one last thing that we need to model, remember to save, and that is the sword. Alright, so go on Google, find yourself a reference for your master sword. Okay, so let's start working this thing out. Let's uh, start simple, we'll add a cylinder. Okay, let's select all of these. We'll shift D to duplicate them. And we'll separate it. Let's add some edge loops. Okay, after these edge loops, let's have everything selected. Let's go to edge. And we'll click on unsubdivide. Let's take the iterations down to one. And you can see we kind of got this crisscross pattern now. So now in face select, we'll select a few faces at a time. We'll do two, we'll skip two. And then we'll do two again. Okay, we're gonna shift D. We'll right click and then we'll hit P to separate that. Let's hit back into here and our original one here. Now we're gonna select every other going this way and skip every other one. Alright, so on this one we can control I and we'll delete the other ones. Tab out. Let's go shade smooth. And then let's add a solidify. Make it one. We'll make the thickness something pretty small, like zero, zero, one. Let's get our other one. Let's add a solidify to it too. Offset to one. Set its thickness to 
0.001 as well. Just a little bit smaller though. Not exactly the same kind of wrapping, but it's, it's close enough. All right, let's add another plane. We'll add a mirror and make a clip. All right, let's apply the mirror modifier. Tab back into edit mode. Let's fill these in. Let's add a cube. Okay, let's shift A, let's add another plane. Go up here to face and click on triangulate faces. It's gonna put us a split around down the center. Hit Control R to add a loop cut to the center. Hit J on the top and the middle verts. Join them all together. Now we can click this middle vert and then GY. We'll bring it out to make a diamond shape. And for this back side, we can extrude it out just a little bit and then scale it down just a little bit. Now let's move it back into our sword mesh. And since it's kind of angled, let's rotate it just a bit. Then we'll bring it on back. Now let's add a mirror. Let's take the x-axis off and put the y-axis on. That way it shows up on the back too. All right, let's add these little wing things. Let's add a cube. Just rotate this side around like this. Let's bring this all the way over here. Let's bring this guy up in here. And this guy over here. Let's add a loop cut move it over towards the edge and let's bevel it to smooth it out a little bit and it gives us more geometry too okay let's add five edge loops select every other one scale them on the y-axis and bring them out a little bit now let's select the other ones scale them on the y-axis bring them in a little bit then down here on the bottom, let's grab these three. We'll GZ to bring them down. Then we'll grab the other two. GZ bring them up. And lastly, let's grab this entire loop at the top. And let's scale it on Y just a little bit more. Alright, let's add another plane. Let's bring it over here to the side. A mirror with merge and clipping. And let's bring this on up into the center. Okay, if we just want to bevel a vert, we can hit Control shift b And as we pull away, you can see that we can add more geometry just from the one vert. Now let's select all of these. We'll hit E for extrude and then S for scale. We'll bring it in. We'll hit GZ to bring it down. And it should be good. Let's right click Shade Auto Smooth. There's our Forsaken Sword. Okay, we're going to add one more plane. We'll get round about the width of the sword. And we'll GZ and bring it up. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier. That way it begins to round things out for me. Okay, I think that's the gnarly looking sword. So what I'm hoping for is I can, I've got the subdivision, I can add a solidify now, set the offset to zero. Let's bring the solidify above the subdivision. And that's looking pretty good. 
And just so we can see this a little bit different, let's give this the same material as the eye material we used earlier. And just to differentiate a little bit better, we can ditch this um, reference that we had before. Okay, let's take this master sword here. Let's tab into edit mode. Let's start to rotate this into place. Bring it back away from her eyes. If I match up with what the hand has already, then we're going to end up with something like this. Okay, those are in a pretty good spot. So I should be able to grab all of this tri or this um, sword stuff, and then tab into pose mode, grab the hand, and then Control P bone. Now whenever I move the hand, the sword's going to go too. Okay, so back into wrist position. You may want to file save as and then save this as a new file because yeah, anything that we sculpt uh, after this, if it's in pose mode, most likely is going to break our uh, rest position pose so you'll want to keep a separate file for this all right we're almost done it's like the armature go into pose mode let's get our cape to fall to the place that we want it to so let's press space bar to get going you can give it about 60 or so frames and then we can back up and choose we can choose a spot choose a frame that you like I think this one's gonna be fine for me, 65. And then with the cloak selected, let's click on the modifiers, go up to the cloth here, and we'll go apply. Now let's go take a look. I'm sculpt mode, I'm gonna get my grab brush, and I'm gonna pull it up above anything that it's clipping through. It's clipping through all this stuff that we modeled on there, that we took our time with. Yeah, we're just going to pull everything out, that way it's not clipping through anything. Alright, let's go into this belt thing. Let's pull this out just a little bit. See if it's clipping anywhere else. It's clipping right here. Let's pull this out. You've got this part right here, it looks kind of weird too. So let's make a kind of a big brush. And let's pull this. We're going to want to pull this down so it's hanging straight down. And that's causing that to pop out. Let's pull this down a little bit forward. And it's kind of created a fold there, which is, it doesn't seem like that's that bad. We might just use it. Okay, that's almost it. I almost forgot that we didn't do the actual hood. So, let's add a cube. Bring it into edit mode. Bring it up. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Let's also add a mirror. Make it clip You're above the subdiv. We're gonna bring this in, scale it down, bring it in on itself like this. And let's grab this top loop right here, this outside top loop. We're going to mean crease it up. Let's bring these guys back. And let's scale this in. Alright, it kind of looks like a hood. Tap out into object mode so we can shade smooth it. We can also apply the mirror. Back into edit mode. Let's add a loop cut right in the center ring there. We'll scale it out. And in this front part here, let's scale this down. Let's bring this closer to Zelda, right above her head here, and we'll scale it down. And let's rotate it around. Try to get it fit on her pretty well. Can we grab these back pieces here, GZ to bring them down. Let's just grab these middle ones here. Okay, so for now, I think that's going to do it. We've got everything we need modeled. 
There are a few minor details that we're going to add in later on, but that's just going to be with texturing. Like um, this little loop thing that goes around here. And then uh, the little details like all that stuff that's on her belt buckle. Um, there's little wavy lines that's on this belt thing that's under her boobs. And then her shirt here has got all kinds of designs on it. And you won't really be able to see it, but there's, there's a few designs that go up here on this shirt. And just little bitty things that we have to paint in. But we're going to take care of that in the next video because in the next one, we're going to be doing all the materials. So we're talking um, like metallics for the sword. We're going to be trying to make some kind of cloth material. And we're going to be painting for the skin and uh, everything else. The only thing we don't have to worry about is the hair because if you followed along in the hair tutorial, we already did that. So be sure to check out the next one. I hope you had fun in this one or you learned something or maybe you just wanted to have something to go to sleep to but join me in the next one we'll make some materials and we're getting one step closer to finishing this sculpt up i will see you guys next time all right bye